So we are here in my computer right now and here is the picture that I have picked for us to edit with today. So today we're just going to be doing two different types of skin retouching. One is going to be like a frequency separation kind of deal and then the other is going to be like a completely different technique entirely and I actually really like this technique a lot better because I think that the skin just comes out a bit more like flawless it just looks better it just looks better let's just go into it and command J for the background we're gonna do that twice I think right now we're gonna do the frequency separation technique before the other just so that you can kind of see the difference. So we're gonna turn off the third layer. The two groups are already turned off. And then we have our background layer. So what we're gonna do with this is put the blur on. We got blur, gosh, and blur. We're gonna do it probably just about to where the skin starts to fade. Let's zoom in right around here. Probably right about here. -ish. So where you can't really see any of the imperfections anymore. Let's go to 8.5. That's pretty good. Now we're going to turn on the second layer. Let's go to image. Apply image. And there's different ways to do this, guys. I've seen people do the add or subtract. Right now I'm just going to stick with the subtract. So we want to put it on the background layer. Because what we are subtracting is we're going to subtract the texture from the background layer. Your scale is going to be 2. The offset 128. Opacity 100. Everything looks good. Keep it uninverted. So do not click that. Alright. And then on this layer we're going to do go down to our settings and change it to linear light. And there we have basically the same picture that we started with. So let's group them together. Shift, um, shift, double click this and then command G. Alright, so let's go back to the background copy two. And this is where we're going to do a lot of smoothing the skin out. So we're going to zoom in a little bit and then I'm going to use the lasso tool. And I'm just going to start picking out little patches and we're going to zoom in a little bit more like right there um we're gonna want to do stuff that's kind of similar in skin tones where it's not a variation and so we're gonna do the, the blur again this is subjective you can kind of push it as far or as little as you want probably around between 9 and 12 i usually keep it like not nothing crazy I think 10. 10 is fine. And we're just going to continue to do that. We're going to pick little spots. You can actually keep doing different blurs. Let's see. Maybe like around here she might need a little bit more because of all the imperfections. And then let's go to this side. Gaussian blur. It's actually better to do the sections more individually so that you can kind of have more power on I think that looks good. And you're going to just continue to do this all over the face. Picking out all these little sections to smooth out. So blur, gosh, and blur. So I'm gonna do this a little bit faster just to kind of get through this tutorial a little bit quicker. And this is one thing people will always say to do the blemishes first and then start doing the smoothing of the skin. And you know, that's completely subjective. It's up to you. It's your picture. You edit it how you want to edit it. Let's do her under eye. Another under eye. It's starting to look pretty good. Let's do her neck. Do this part a little bit over here. It's kind of a little patchy still. Let's do a little bit around here. And you don't want to take it too far. You kind of want everything to really look natural. I like a natural retouch. For me, that's the bread and butter. So I think that looks pretty decent. Let's see the before and after. So there's the before and here's the after and you can see quite a dramatic difference and you see how like everything is just kind of more evened out. I usually don't play with this this layer too much. Other skin retouchers will touch it and they'll use like the clone stamp or whatever they use. I usually do all the blemishes on a separate layer, it seems to work out for me. So what I'll do is I'll go to the spot healing brush and zoom in quite a bit and just get rid of all the little imperfections. And normally I just aim for like the super dark spots. And this is something that like people who love the dodge and burn technique will kind of go with. Everybody has their own style, their own preference, their own techniques. 
and their own workflow. It's all whatever you're comfortable with. This is just what I'm comfortable with and what I feel like gets the best results. I'm probably going to speed this up in post-processing just so you guys don't have to sit here and see all the meticulousness of doing this. So I normally will just go in the dark spots or any of the places that I feel are really like trouble areas that don't look great on the skin just kind of get rid of all the little blemishes bumps imperfections in the skin well that is the difference with this technique let me get some, rid of some of this hair is that I think in the end it looks nice but it, sometimes um, depending on the skin of your model it will look a bit blotchy so that's kind of why I end up going for the other technique a bit more often because it really smooths everything out dramatically. So where it's like not so blotchy. But this is a good technique too, especially if your model already has like really good skin. <sighs> Alright, so the battery died. I had to refix. Well, I had to switch out. So anyways, we're back at it. We're back at it again. And so we're just here cleaning up the skin and the little hairs off of her face just a little bit. If you want to clear out the lines, um, that's completely up to you. Sometimes I leave them, especially if they're older, because that's kind of part of who they are. You don't want to like take too much of their natural look. But I do like to clean up a lot around the mouth, the eyes, and just like the little spots. Right here, this is looking pretty good. I mean, she doesn't have bad skin to begin with. Her face is really pretty nice. Let's get rid of some of these hairs a bit. Okay. And I don't, like I said, I don't want to go too much with this because it will like start to look blotchy and fake. I just try to keep it like super minimal. So yeah, we're going to keep it real natch. You know, we were still able to clean up quite a bit. So let's see the before and the after, before and after. So I really like how her skin looks. And don't worry about this area because you, if you're like dodging and burning, which is something that I do later on anyways, like I don't do it as a skin retouching technique. I typically do my dodge and burn completely separate on its own layers. Nothing to do with the skin. Part of it, but yeah, not really. But if you want to go in further and kind of clean it up a bit more, you know, that's completely up to you. So guys, that's technique one. Now let's jump into number two, which is super fast and super easy. And we're gonna turn the group three off so that we're back to square one. Um, okay, and let's close it out. And we're gonna duplicate this, Command J. I'm on Mac, so. So we duplicate the layer. Now we're gonna do Command I to invert it. And then we're gonna go to Vivid Light. So the next step we're gonna do, I know it looks really crazy, and like, what the heck did she just do? Hold on. We're gonna go to um, Other, High Pass, and then we're gonna go to 24. And it looks still kind of like a mess, but don't worry, we're still gonna fix it. So 24, okay, keep it at that. And then we're gonna do blur, Gaussian blur. This seems to be a really popular tool with the, the retouching. It's, it just works, it just works. And for this, you're gonna leave the Gaussian blur between like three and four-ish. I normally do like 3.5, 3.7. I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to click OK. And then we're going to create a mask. So we're going to go down to this little tool right here. Mask. And we're going to invert the mask. So it looks basically like how it did when we first started. Nothing has changed. Her skin's still how it was. So in this technique, we're going to use the paintbrush instead. And we're going to make sure that the foreground is on white. So that whatever you're painting does become visible and normally I like to keep the flow like between I like to keep it really low we could do 100 so you can kind of see the effects of what it does let's zoom in a tiny bit and you can see right away like what it does it just completely smooths everything with like no effort I'll normally leave it probably around like 20 
17. I had it on 17 because that's what I did earlier. So we'll leave it at like around 18. Keep it a happy medium. And we're just going to go all over the skin. I will wait till after to clean up the hair and the blemishes because you want everything to be super even because you don't want to clean too much up and if you do mess up say you go in the eye and you mess up all you have to do is click X on your keyboard or go to this little arrow and it will toggle between the white and the black and then you just do it, turn it to black whatever you want deleted and just go back over it like I don't want that to be and it will turn it back to black so that you don't even see it all right let's go back to white and we're going to continue going on with the skin yeah i think this is looking really good so far and as you can see like we're doing this in just minutes because you can see like how much of a difference it makes already and you don't want to go too much with this because the more that you layer on the more you can kind of see the effects and i like i don't like to see too much of it so that's why i keep it super simple and then I'll toggle back and forth, you know, if I think I went into the eyes or into the nose. The brush is on, the hardness is at 5, so, and it's pretty big. This is a pretty decent sized brush. So there we have it. Let's see the before and the after. And as you can see, it just takes so much of the imperfections away. All the unevenness of the light of the skin it just smooths everything out after that if you want to like, still clean up like a little bit small lines right here and blemishes we can do that too so we're gonna create a layer and then go back to our healing brush and zoom in again and just get rid of the small little things that we don't like like last time you're taking away the little small imperfections so you just do like the deep deep dark ones get rid of some of the hairs the spot healing brush is freaking amazing it like <laughs> It takes care of everything. It's just perfect. It gets rid of everything. Little hairs, little blemishes. So, yeah, I try not to do this too much because I don't want the skin to look blotchy. And I'm going to get rid of this little highlight right here because I actually don't like it so much. And then, like, over here, get rid of some of the hairs again. If you want to get rid of the lines in her skin, go for it. Go for it. This. Like as you can see, that she has really pretty decent skin. It's like not too much. I'm going maybe even a little bit overboard with some of this. Let's get some of these little spots over here. I think it looks really good. There's not too much that needs to be done to it. Let's get rid of like some of these little extra pieces that are like chipping. Clean up around here a little bit. Just kind of some of these little bumps and lines. And I think that's about it, guys. I'm not gonna. Like I said, I really like the skin to look pretty natural.